with Mark Cook with Kit Planes Magazine. You know, since we've had electronic flight instruments and autopilots really well connected, we've had the ability to do some things that are really important to safety. One of the early ones we've seen was the level button. Now, basically, if the airplane gets out of hand, say you're a VFR pilot and you get caught into IMC, uh, you can press the level, it'll bring the airplane back to level, and that's a really nice safety feature. But of course, we've gone beyond that now uh, with a couple of technologies that are either called uh, safe glide or emergency glide. Now, Garmin uh, came out with this first as part of an opportunity to have the EFIS look for an airport that may be under the airplane, that may be reachable, set the airplane up uh, for the approach to that airport, uh, and in theory, take a lot of workload off of the pilot. Now, Dynon has just recently introduced software that does the very same thing, and they call it an emergency glide. I've been flying with it for a while, and it's an interesting concept. It's basically, when you engage it, it sets the airplane up for the best glide speed, which you put in ahead of time, and then it searches the area beneath the airplane for an airport that's within gliding distance. If it finds one, it points the airplane at that, uh, at that airport and sets up a few parameters that helps the pilot basically relieve workload. So now your job is to sort of monitor the autopilot while you go about your troubleshooting uh, routine. Is it fuel? Is it ignition? Is it carb heat? Whatever it is that may help you restore power at that point, the autopilot is taking over the, the work of actually flying the airplane. It's kind of like having an autopilot. It's kind of like having a co-pilot that you don't have to feed. So I thought it'd be interesting to take you through a demo of how this actually works in flight. So we're by Glassstar. We have a, a two-screen Dynon HDX system. And uh, we're flying here in the Willamette Valley on a beautiful fall day. And we're going to engage it and see what happens. Okay, so we're up in flight. We're in the uh, Willamette Valley here at about 4,000 feet. And we're going to simulate an engine failure. So we're going to throttle back. We're now at idle power. And to invoke this, I'm going to press and hold the nearest key. Autopilot mode. You heard it said autopilot mode, and now it's showing something emergency glide active. That's what I'm seeing on my screen. And from that, it has determined that uh, looks like 17 Sierra is my nearest airport. You'll notice that the airplane is taking its time to pitch to our best rate, which is 80 knots in this particular airplane. And we're pretty close to the airport. So what it's done is it said, near airport, take control. Well, we're uh, about 2,000 feet or 30, we're actually about uh, 3,200 feet above the airport. So I'm going to look down and find it. I can actually see it. Not an issue. Let me put some rudder in for you, nail, you tail dragger guys. We're going to follow the prompts to get the airplane contribute, uh, configured for the descent. Now, I notice I'm not doing anything. I'm letting the airplane do its thing. It's finding the airport now. It's very close to the airport. So what it would actually want to do is if we were closer, it may decide to begin circling the airport. Let's see what it does here. Now, it's worth noting that we were fairly high up, and we had some good options below us. One of the things that I'll demonstrate here in a minute is that the autopilot will not allow the airplane to head for an airport that it can't reach because of terrain autopilot or something else. Mode. Okay, you heard autopilot mode, so I got the enunciation. Now it's going to circle the airport. So it's basically going to I clear the engine here a little bit. It's going to set up a 20-degree left-hand turn. And in theory, you're over the runway. We're close to it, in the, at least in the proximity of the airport. And uh, you should be able to see, see the runway and get set up for your, uh, your approach. So let's try something a little bit different. We're going to disengage it. We're going to autopilot disconnect. Disengage the autopilot. I'm going to be nice to my Titan 340 and give it a little bit of power here. And you'll see that it says uh, emergency glide exiting. So that's the enunciation for the pilot. That yeah, you got the control of the airplane. You got it from here. Go ahead and get us landed. So not just out of curiosity, we're going to fly a little further from the runway and see what happens. And just for, out of curiosity, I'm going to be looking here at my uh, poor flight to see if the glide ring with today's winds. we got the uh, winds out of the east at about 18. So we're just kind of at the edge of our glide path here. We're now at 2,200 feet. I'm going to level off, pull the power again. 
And I'm going to re-engage the boat. Autopilot. That was pretty close to 80 knots. And once again, it found that same airport. So correctly, it understood that we were within gliding range of uh, Chehalem Air Park. Now my fourth flight is telling me we're right at the very edge. So let's see what happens. Again, we're pitching to uh, about 80 knots. We got about 77, 78 there. We got about 850 feet a minute sink. About right. And now it's set up a nav profile that's going to take me directly to the airport. A couple of other nice things that it will do for you. It will plug in the airport elevation in the field that is normally reserved for the uh, uh, altitude pre-select. That's a nice, uh, nice uh, reminder of, uh, of how close you are to the runway. Now you notice if you're looking at the screen here, it said emergency glide, no valid airport. So what happened is we sunk out of our range. So what it's done is basically reverted to a mode where it's heading me still at the last heading that I had. So in this case, it, it kept the heading that it thought was closest to the airport, which is actually a good thing. You want to keep, at least keep heading in that general direction. But it's telling me that I no longer have the ability to glide to the airport. So because of that, it's reverted to a mode that basically keeps the airplane under control and at the speed you've asked for while you're trying to get to the airport. Now I'm going to add a little bit of power and see if we can re-engage. I actually can see the runway out in front of me. Now that I've added, I've found a little bit of power magically, I could probably make it there. So this system is not designed to re-engage if you get to it, but if I were to re-engage now, and we've got traffic taken off from Caleb. So we're going to abort this. Autopilot, disconnect. And come back around. You'll also notice that the, uh, the terrain awareness is showing up on the map portion of the Dynon display, which is a nice uh, backstop. And uh, if we zoom in, you'll see that there's uh, mountains just ahead of us. We definitely, if, we're, if we can't make the runway, we want to make sure that we have the opportunity to find something else without heading into the rocks. So another nice feature that the Dynon system does for you is once you've engaged emergency glide, it will actually populate your comm radio with the appropriate comm frequencies that you need for the airport that it's chosen uh, as your, uh, here's your potential safe landing spot. So that takes another piece of the workload that it takes out of the pilot's hands uh, and uh, it gives you more time to do your troubleshooting. Have you run a tank dry? Do you have carbides? Do you need to apply carb heat? Uh, is the mixture wrong? Whatever it is. And again, the purpose of this isn't necessarily to set you up for landing at a particular runway, but it does give you that time to troubleshoot in flight. And while it is determining where you can go, it is looking at the actual winds and the sink rate as you're going. As we saw in the early demonstration, for a short bit of time, until the airplane turned, I was actually in gliding distance of Chehalem. As I turned into the wind and the sink picked up a little bit, it calculated that now you're not going to make the runway. And it alerted me to that. Now, if that were a real situation, I might try to get close to the airport or I might start looking for good places to set down near it. Uh, but I don't necessarily think I would turn 180 degrees at that point, especially with the altitude that was available to me. So I think you can see from this demo that the technology works really well. It's a real nice uh, time saver and energy saver. Uh, and that does really help get uh, sort of the pilot's brain around what you need to do to get the airplane back on the, on the ground safely. Thanks for uh, joining me on this flight. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching all our videos on kit planes, and uh, we'll see you next time.